<laughs> Hello, everyone. I have a feeling that we are streaming and I forgot to put the first slide on. So I'm just going <laughs> to do that because everyone who is going to be watching in replay will need to see the slide. Um, so this is our topic today. We are going to be talking about fleas and how to stop using dangerous flea and tick mites. And I must say that um, today is going to be slightly different because I'm not going to be even hiding the fact that I'll be talking about how I deal with flea control and tick control. The other good news is that we have Anna here to help us navigate through the maze of questions. And we have some other team members in the background. Um, I am so glad that we have gotten to this point of talking about flea and tick control because no matter how well you feed your dog, no matter how good your dog supplements are, no matter how much you try to give your dog enough exercise and make sure that their emotional health is good, um, there are some parts of their life that can be super dangerous. And it is really difficult at the age of uh, 10 or 11 or 13 years to know exactly why your dog got sick with a certain problem. But uh, the best way is to reduce any possible factors that can decrease your dog's longevity and health span. Hi, Anna, how are you doing? Hi, Peter, I'm good. I'm happy to be here, it's been a while. Nice, nice, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to have you here, actually. I, I, I will disclose what we were talking about with Anna before we started. <laughs> we were talking about um, the, the, the best way of maintaining our, our positive attitude and mood is not watching news. Um, and I just watched recently a podcast of a really great guy who wrote a book on trauma and also um, had a podcast on trauma. And he said that sometimes he actually write on a prescri prescription path, no news for for people, for his patients, because he's a psychologist and psychiatrist. Uh, but there's one exception, actually, and that is we talked, Anna and I talked about TikTok and how addictive it is because it's so feel good, <laughs> right? So uh, I guess there are some exceptions, even though we don't want to waste time um, over silly things. But sometimes it's actually important to tune our mind and our day in a certain tone. I do that a lot with. Um, with music, uh, with um, singing. I just started taking singing lessons, very scary actually, <laughs> very traumatic. Last lesson, I was sweating so hard. I was so nervous because it was my first lesson. But anyway, going back to our topic and that's fleas. You know, our dogs are really dependent on us and you are making decisions for them every single day probably every hour and they're kind of at our mercy they are vulnerable they uh need to know that we are there for them even though sometimes they look cocky and they look uh, badass and they bark at other dogs and do all these things they, they really are vulnerable and um today's presentation or today's chat or conversation uh, will be about um, fleas and ticks mainly because it is one of the areas that can be really harmful to dogs. Um, I'm not going to go into bashing certain brands or flea product or whatever because number one it doesn't really help anyone. Number two, I do not want to spend the rest of my life uh, in law, uh, lawsuits and, and courts. So you can actually go out and, um, and research and check your dog's flea products. And I would like to actually give you an idea how to do that. And also what the background of our current situation is in veterinary medicine and how difficult it is actually to find any information about and reports on free product safety. Um, there are obvious reasons for that. Um, the companies that make these products, they do not want uh, uh, you to know. 
the governments that should control these products, sometimes they're lobbied by these companies and sometimes they just don't have resources to actually make sure that everything on the market is safe. And, you know, humans will always take, um, take a priority over our animals. We have to be there for them. So there, there are some exceptions though. Um, there is a, there is a organization which is called, uh, and can you, am I sharing? I thought I was sharing and I'm not sharing. So I'm just gonna start sharing again. So there are some organizations that um, um, actually have tried to point to the damage and toxicity and um, issues with uh, the natural conventional flea products. Um, the Natural De Resources Defense Council has done a lot of different studies and um, they have basically concluded, and this is also um, information confirmed by the Environmental uh, Protection Agency, that over that most of the flea products on the market have actually 50,000% more than EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, recommended toxicity levels. Now, so EPA recommends that toxicity levels should not reach over this little green area. And the flea products are actually increasing the toxicity by 55,000, sorry, by 50,000%. So this is pretty major. Um, and uh, you can see that it's also not discussed. Um, it is hard to find studies that are done even in the teens, like 2010 and, and after. Therefore, I'm going to be just giving you some examples from, from the time before, because the products that are on the market are still there and the studies are not available. So we have to go with what is available. And you may actually know about some studies that are current or more current, and I would like to know, but it's kind of beside the point whether it's current or from 2008, because it's still, as I said, the products are still on the market. So, you know, from 20,000 cases, reported cases, 15,000 were minor, and then there were some major side effects, uh, only about 144 from the 20,000 and 167 deaths. But personally, I don't want to take any chances that if I put something on my dog's skin or coat, or if I give him some sort of pill, that he or she is going to die. I can't even imagine the terror and the trauma of those people who basically want to protect their dogs from fleas and ticks and administer the product. And next thing they know, their dog is dead. Um, I know that in the big scheme of things, the risks may be relatively small, but there's also a huge number of unreported problems and huge number of undetected problems uh, when it comes to other organ diseases or cancer or shortened lifespan or decreased mobility or seizures and neurological problems and, and, and senile dementia and all that. So I think that the situation is actually quite different than um, then uh, just kind of going with the statistics as they were all that we know. Personally, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg and the situation has gotten so complex that it is very difficult for us to actually um, know exactly what is going on. The most difficult and the most challenging products are the ones that are organophosphate based. And uh, they're derived from nerve gas and they interfere with the nerve signal transmission. So, you know, if these substances can attack the nervous system of the, the insect, there is no way that it does not affect the neurotransmitters in our dogs, in our, in our own body, in our children, and in our seniors. So it's super important to remember that when it comes to uh, trying to choose the right product um, and trying to choose the right way of preventing fleas uh, and ticks um, that you need to keep in mind toxicity of these products. And you may be surprised despite the fact that I'll be talking about the products that I make and we formulated with my colleague and friend, Gabriela Benjes. Uh, you may be surprised to say that in the ideal situation, don't use anything. Personally, Half of the year, 
I do not use any flea and tick control on packs, even though I live in an area that could be called the flea capital of the world. But there is one important caveat. PAX has not had fleas since we arrived here in Maui in November. So I don't really give any flea products. But as soon as I see that fleas are coming around um, in different spots, my, my friends are saying that their dogs have fleas, or I see one or two fleas, then I actually step it up. And I'll give you a really nice, uh, simple protocol and also a chart that you'll be able to take a screenshot of that will give you an idea how to address all these all these um, challenges that we, we have with flea syntics. Sorry to interrupt, Peter. Um, yeah. You are not sharing anymore. I don't know if you- I am um, not sharing anymore. Okay. I don't always share. Perfect. I wasn't <laughs> sure. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. I, I actually flipped back and forth. Um, you guys, you have to put up with me. That's all. <laughs> but I, I think that slides are sometimes just really boring. And um, so, the, the thing that um, I'd like you to know is that every time you see a flea product, there are certain active ingredients and you can actually go on um, a safety data sheet um, website and um, check what the ingredients do. So I'm gonna show you one, one, um, one such excerpt or piece of information. Um, again, I'm not going to be giving you the names of the products because um, as I said, I don't have <laughs> unlimited resources on legal fees. And uh, as I said, like, I don't wanna be arguing with anyone. I'm just kind of pointing, uh, pointing out the ways how you find out what, um, what your product, your flea product is like or what, what toxicity or what issues there are with the free product. So this is one of the most commonly used uh, free products. And you can see that the safety data sheet, this is just a screenshot of um, one of the parts of the safety data sheets. You can see that, um, that obviously the products are harmful that swallow. And then there is a, there is a specific target organ toxicity single exposure, single exposure can cause damage to organs, okay? And specific target organ toxicity causes damage to organs, central nervous system through prolonged or repeated exposure, right? So why do we justify products that not only have 50,000% more or higher than recommended toxicity level? And why do we suggest or, or use products and allow products that actually cause damage to central nervous system? I started being really um, passionate about speaking against conventional flea control. When I administer one of these products many, many years ago, maybe more than 20 years ago, to a dog that was absolutely healthy. And before it left the office, it started having an epileptic attack. And uh, it happened a few, few times after that. And um, I felt horrible, number one. I also kind of felt helpless because I knew that people just didn't like fleas and they would be using these products. And uh, it takes usually 10 to 20 years for people to get something when it comes to a really ingrained habitual behavior, such as using flea products and conventional flea products, and also inform people that these products are dangerous. It's people, people sometimes look at me when I tell them, hey, did you know that this is really toxic? They kind of look at me like I fell of a tree. So um, I will show you another area and I'm gonna start sharing again. And that is the full safety data sheet. And you can pretty much look it up for any ingredient that you uh, find on your dog's flea product. So i um, just going to go to this section. I have it, sorry, I have it somewhere here. And I realize I will have to sh shift the screen one more time. Actually, I'm here. Can you see? No, you can't see the safety data sheet. So I'm gonna 
share my screen in a different way. It always takes a little while to fiddle around with the screens, but now we're gonna see. All right. So um, so this is actually, um, this is fun. <laughs> they, there are even names of these companies there, right? So it, it, it's unavoidable, but I'm sharing a public material. Um, this particular ingredient is fipronil, uh, which has been researched fairly recently and um, obviously is a problem. Uh, so you can see you can see um, the whole safety data sheet here. So every time you have actually um, every time you have um, any product, you can just go on medical safety data sheet. Um, you can just Google medical safety data sheet and the product and it'll come up. Now, um, what do we do about it? <laughs> well, um, number one, we have to protect our dogs and our children and our seniors because they're the most um, prone. Um, when it comes to side effects, um, there were about 25,000 cases in 1996, again, a long time ago, but just to give you an example, 25,000 cases of children under age of six who were exposed to organophosphate pesticides from flea and tick control products, and hundreds of children were hospitalized, right? So kids find that little packaging, they think it's some sort of candy or something that is nice and yummy, and they, they basically um, ingest it and they end up in a hospital because that's how severely sick they, they become. Now, if we put these products on our dogs and dogs basically become, by doing that, deadly to fleas and ticks, how can anyone actually think that it does absolutely nothing to their body and their system? How can it be? Of course, there is a difference between insects and mammals, but the neurotransmitters and some of the biochemical and neurobiological reactions and responses and, and, and physiology is the same. How can we think that it's not going to affect our dogs? How can we think that when we pet our dogs, it's not going to affect us? And how can we think that these products do not affect those who feed us, like bees? or butterflies and the pollinators. So there is another issue. It's not just about protecting your dog and, and ourselves. It is also about protecting the environment and these substances get in the environment. And we, we know that uh, when it comes to pesticides in general, they have decimated bee populations. They have decimated biodiversity. They uh, have unprecedented um, impact on our environment. So there's another reason, if you like bees and butterflies, and if you like good fruit and food, and uh, if you don't want to contribute to the destruction just for the sake of um, gain and money, financial gain and money, uh, it is time for us to really be responsible and start using something different. Now, um, the common side effects, um, there are many, obviously, from skin irritation to diarrhea to depression, um, um, imbalances, uh, trembling, seizures, elevated liver enzymes, and as I said, even death. Um, <laughs> I know that this could be actually an alternative to flea control. <laughs> Every dog will have a monkey and the monkey will pick the fleas, but it does not really, it's not obviously feasible. Plus monkeys like to be in the jungle. They don't like to be in, um, Vancouver City or some other places. Um, and I, I, I actually, on the basis of seeing some TikTok and, uh, and Instagram and Facebook videos, um, I know the dogs and monkeys can be a lot, a lot of fun together. They, they can become friends. Uh, and speaking of friendship, um, about um, 15 years ago, I started coming to Maui. It was uh, initially as a as a result of a complete burnout, um, being in a holistic practice, being working as much as I could, and I still couldn't solve all the different challenges that people had because, um, because there were too many dogs and too many clients who wanted to see me. 
And um, the environment for holistic medicine has not always been the most friendly when it comes to the regulatory bodies and, and conventional medical um, practice. Um, so I decided to start this online company and some of you may know my story, but in order for me to kind of like get a little better perspective and, and to see what I should do, I, I left for Maui. And uh, as a yoga practitioner, I, I also found a yoga studio and uh, I practice yoga. And I met Gabriela, who besides being an amazing yoga teacher, she was also, uh, she's also a herbalist. And her and I became friends and um, it didn't take very long for us to talk about fleas because we were really frustrated about the situation. And she lives in, um, in uh, the east part of Maui, which is very much a flea capital of the world. Like pretty much like you bring your dog in, you can be sure that your dog will have at least 50 fleas on when you leave. <laughs> so it became really uh, urgent because once in a while I went to East Maui to visit Gabriela on her farm. And uh, we started experimenting with different uh, herbs and formulas and wanted to see whether we would be able to get rid of fleas in the flea capital of the world. And um, the picture on the left here is actually the picture from the place where flea hex and tick hex were born. And I'm really proud of us being able to put together a formula that after seven years of being on the market, we still have 4.9 plus out of five star reviews. And we have had zero, zero fatality, zero major side effects. And maybe once in a while, some sort of skin irritation, but I can't even remember. Anna, you'd be able to actually comment on that because you worked in the customer service um, for some time. Uh, basically, Nothing is perfect, but I am super happy that we've been able to tackle one of the biggest challenges out there. And so when it comes to when it comes to flea control and tick control, I would like to spend the rest of this time together here, not only tell you what I do, not only tell you what I recommend, but also tell you what you can do and ask questions if you have any. So um, we have not been able to so far come with a product that is a spot on product uh, for two reasons. One, dogs do not really like even natural essential oils on their skin. Um, their sense of smell is much stronger. And I think that it is an insult to their senses to actually pour something like that on. I, I'm not 100% sure whether we will ever make a spot on. Um, we may or we may not, but right now, whatever we have works fairly well, actually very well for fleas and fairly well for ticks. And again, I want to be honest with you because if you've tried any natural products for fleas and ticks, you know that most of them do not work at all or work very poorly. So we've been able to actually achieve a really reliable not only safety record, but also reliable activity when it comes to getting rid of fleas. The whole lineup of products, there are three products. One of them is called Flea X Wash, and that's mainly used for um, severe infestations or when you're starting. Then the second one is called Flea X Household, which is for household because fleas, especially, multiply by laying eggs in the carpet and the, the upholstery on a sofa and in your dog's bed. And then they, they uh, hatch and uh, go through obviously the developmental stages, which you can look up on online again, a larva and pupa and the, the adult flea. Um, the most important part is beside treating your dog is to treat your household. So this is actually, this is an important element. And then tick hex, uh, tick hex is actually a flea and tick body spray. Now we may be renaming it, renaming it to flea, hex, flea and tick hex because it is really good for both. But this has been kind of a natural evolution. Initially, we used to do just the wash and the household spray. But then uh, when it uh, came to tick hex, we started using it for tick control. And I realized that in some situations, 
That is all you need actually for controlling your dog's fleece as well. So to go further, um, I'd like to talk about the ingredients um, a little more. And uh, let me just see, I'm gonna share my browser again. Uh, all right, we are right here. Uh, is this, oh, it's working, okay. Um, so I can still see the slides at the moment that you're sharing. You I don't see your browser. The slides. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Anna. You're the best. <laughs> Teamwork. You can see that um, Anna okay, is uh, as amazing as Alicia is. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Anna. So, um, when it comes to the flea hex wash, and I'll talk about the uses a little later, but I'll just talk to you about the ingredients. Uh, one of the ingredients, so we, we actually go for organic ingredients whenever possible. And we source from the growers whenever possible. And this product is actually sourced from the growers. And we also use most of the ingredients are actually certified organic. So a castile soap is good for the uh, for the wash, obviously, it, it has to serve as a wash and it has to have certain ability to um, kind of dissolve the essential oils and so on. And also it's a good opportunity to wash your dog and, 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 uh, and make sure that the film or the protective layer from the wash will stay on the coat. So the carrier is the castile soap, which is made from... Um, made from our, uh, coconut and sunflower seeds. And then we also use coconut oil, which is certified organic as well. And then we added neem oil. And uh, then we have some other essential oils, lemongrass, cedarwood, rosemary, tea tree, peppermint. And uh, that basically makes something that we call hexcalibur. That's the, that's the main active ingredient kind of, um, uh, component. And then we added certified organic apple cider vinegar. Uh, dog skin is um, slightly acidic and the apple cider vinegar not only enhances the cleansing and deodorizing effect, it also is good for your dog skin. Now in the free X walk wash, we had to put emulsifier and the uh, emulsifier is polysorbate 80. It is actually a relatively benign ingredient. There is a small amount of that. It is not actually plant-based, uh, mainly because we just had to make sure that the whole <laughs> wash doesn't clump in one clump of coconut oil and essential oils, and it doesn't, you know, very much, you'll, you won't be able to use it, right? So we had to do that. But when it comes to um, this formula and any other formula that I've seen, uh, this is probably one of the best products when it comes to the quality of the ingredients. And I dare to say that it's also um, one of the best, best products, natural products when it comes to reliability. So the next thing uh, that we'll, we'll talk about is um, um, Pax. <laughs> Paxi Maxi. He's, uh, he is, uh, some of you know, my dog. Um, now, I'm not sure whether I'm sharing the right picture. I will share the right picture right now. Um, and as you may know, uh, we have been kind of moving between uh, Maui and Czech Republic, my home country, and then Vancouver, because that's where I, that's where I live permanently, in quotes. That's where I pay taxes. Um, and Vancouver has been pretty good with fleas. Uh, there are not many, many issues. Uh, the odd time uh, someone tells me that their dog has fleas. But Europe and Czech Republic is wild when it comes to insects. Not only fleas, but also ticks. And ticks have challenged me to the greatest degree because it's super hard to, number one, Tell my dog Pax that he cannot run in the parks and the orchards that are everywhere in Prague. And it's actually one of the most friendly, dog friendly city in the world that I've experienced. Um, but it's also hard to control the ticks. So um, 
last year when I spent about five months in, in the Czech Republic, it was a real testing ground to see what I can do and what I can expect from, from um, TIG hex and the, the TIG control. Um, I'd like to go actually through first flea prevention and give you a little bit of a summary and then uh, go through ticks because they are basically the most complicated. <laughs> I have a quick question uh, first. Uh -huh. Before we go into the protocol, I just wanted to see yes. if we wanted to start with a little giveaway. We've got a couple mm. things to give away today. Maybe split it Absolutely. up in between. Absolutely. Well, by the way, you guys, I'm so passionate and excited about talking about ticks and fleas. Uh, actually, passing on the information. I'm not excited about ticks and fleas, but I'm excited about passing on the information that I almost forgot that we have a giveaway today uh, of uh, flea and tick products. And uh, that giveaway will actually apply even to our Canadian friends because we are able to actually place the order for you in the US store and you can actually receive the product on an individual basis. If for whatever reason, it's not gonna go through the border, um, you will let us know and we'll, we'll give you some sort of replacement of a different product, but I, I think it should be fine. For everyone else, um, the approval process in Canada is super cumbersome and uh, you know I don't need to really answer why, but um, we have not, received a permit because we've been told that even though this product is made of certified organic ingredients that are absolutely not harmful, this product is categorized as an insecticide and we cannot really do anything else than having a $200,000 plus trials and all that stuff. So it's become really difficult for a small company like ours, but we are working on being able to um, maybe uh, We'll, we'll keep you posted. Subscribe to our newsletter and I'll let, you, let you know what uh, what we can do about um, getting flea and flea hex and tick hex to you um, in Canada. We cannot sell it in Canada, but you can purchase it in the United States, basically. That's the nutshell. Anna, why don't you just go and uh, and let's um, let's see what questions you prefer. All right. Um, do I get to choose the first prize or would you like to tell me what we are? Oh, Anna, do it. Just okay. do it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, why don't we start with flea hex wash? Because that's what we were talking about. And I, my first question will be, when was flea hex wash released? What year was it released? So we'll give everybody um, a bit of chance to answer. And would you like to pick uh, a number to see who, which lucky winner of answer will be? Uh, why don't we just leave the first first person because this is a question that is quite difficult. So we'll yep. give it to the fastest and the first person who come up, comes up with the answer. Perfect. Um, so the first uh, person the to flea give hex. us the answer of when flea hex was released. Sounds good. And to everyone, uh, you will be receiving a coupon for that product. Okay, so you'll yep. be able to use it on our website. All right, so um, so when it comes to flea prevention. Do you wanna um, share the chart again? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I keep forgetting today. When it comes to flea prevention, um, there are basically three cases scenario or flea, flea control. The first one, when your dog doesn't have any fleas, but you know that you live in a flea ridden area. The second case scenario is light fleas and the third case scenario is heavy fleas. So I currently belong to this category. And what I do, I have flea hex wash on hand. I have not been using tick hex and flea hex at this point, but I have it on hand just in case. And I also have flea hex and uh, household spray just in case. So if you have a, let's say if you've seen fleas around and you're worried, you can actually split, spray the blankets and the carpets and the areas where your dog lies down uh, once a month or so. If you know, if you really worry about fleas or if you, you know, you can either use the Tick-Hex body spray once weekly or less frequently, meaning that right now I don't use it at all, but I have it handy, okay? If I see a flea, only one or two fleas. I may not even do a wash and I may just use a tick hex body spray and see what happens, but I will use it probably several times in the row, like several days or maybe for a week and then keep uh, combing with the flea comb to see whether there are any fleas. 
And if I see that I have not been able to kind of control them within a week, like I would do flea X wash and I would basically go into the protocol for light fleas or heavy fleas. If you suddenly see that, you know, you went to East Maui and you have 50 fleas on your dog and, and it may become a real serious problem because the number of fleas that are riding on your dog Taking a, taking a ride on your dog is a small percentage of the total number of fleas that will be in your household if you don't control them. So that's super important to remember. If you have light fleas, I use the flea hex wash every two weeks until no fleas are present for at least one month. Then the body spray daily for one week and then weekly until fleas are no longer seen again. Okay, and for the household spray, I would use it weekly until no fleas are seen. And this may be a cycle. You may need to kind of get a get a sense of what is just about right for your situation. I remember that one time, <laughs> one time I went to visit my friends who had a quite serious flea problem with their dog, and this protocol wasn't working. So I actually came to their house and I realized that they had like blankets and thick carpet, shag carpets. And like, you know, they had so many habitats for fleas to actually live in that it was almost impossible or it was impossible to actually control the fleas. So you have to actually throw, take everything that you can in the wash, wash the carpets or throw the carpets. Like I would definitely not be using big um, shag carpet in your house if you live in the flea capital of the world right like that's that makes sense uh hardwood floors are always better and they're quite popular so that's uh that's nice um and make sure that you don't create a habitat like a little flea zoo right like it's uh or flea circus like you definitely don't want to contribute to the problem there's a certain limitation to anything that you do and but the good news is that um uh, that if you if you um take this seriously, you will be able to control your dog's fleas without any need to use conventional flea control. And, you know, I wouldn't use it anyway, but for those of you who actually um, still have it in the cabinet, I hope that this is the last time uh, we need to talk about it and that you'll throw it in the garbage and will never fall into the trap of marketing and fear when it comes to fleas. You can see that what I'm telling you here, like there are some situations where you don't need to use the flea control. Even the one that I am able to sell you and offer you, um, in the ideal case scenario, we wouldn't need to use any of that. But you know, the world is real. It is not a fairy tale. It is not Disneyland. And that's why we sometimes need to use uh, flea control and flea products. The other thing that you probably already know that natural diet is actually preventive when it comes to fleas. Uh, fleas are sugar junkies. They like carbohydrate-based food. Uh, they like smelly dogs and smelly dogs are more likely to <laughs> be smelly when they are on kibble and processed food, as you may know. So all that can play a role as well. Uh, if you have heavy fleas, you will have to be very persistent and thorough because if you want to get rid of them without any chemicals, you will have to bathe your dog at least once weekly for a month or even longer if you still see fleas. It really depends how many fleas are in the environment and how many are hatching. So using the household spray is important and also the tick hex body spray because those fleas that hatch and you have not been able to control will jump on your dog. You have to get rid of them before they start having good times and start breeding and laying more eggs. Um, so you don't want any flea parties in your house. Um, and flea eggs household spray, again, weekly until fleas are no longer there. I think there is a typo. Use once weekly until fleas no longer appear. Oh, actually, that's good. <laughs> now, um, we are going to go to ticks. And ticks are tough. 
even with the conventional tick products, you will not prevent ticks from attaching to the skin. You will not prevent some ticks attaching to the skin if you use tick hex, but you will dramatically reduce the exposure to ticks and you will reduce their attachment for sure with tick hex. I do not think that the, some of the conventional tick products will actually prevent attachment, but tick hex does serve as a repellent and it also does destroy the ticks, uh, mainly because of the neem oil, which is insecticidal, but we have not seen any negative side effects in the course of seven years of them being used on dogs. And I use this product on packs with confidence that I, I actually will most likely prevent Lyme disease, even though I can't really be sure 100%, but I will also prevent any side effects of toxic uh, tick products. I actually used um, conventional tick and flea control on Sky, my previous dog, once. Um, we, I'll give you a little story. I had a family friend who knew me since I was basically born. And we used to visit her a lot. And um, I used to visit her when I came back to the Czech Republic and uh, she's now passed away, but she used to have a dog. And then the dog passed away and Sky and I came for a visit. And pretty much within one day, Sky was loaded with fleas because those fleas were dormant until they were waiting for the next ride, right? And at that point, um, I guess I wasn't acknowledging the, the potential uh, danger of these products as much as I do now. And I did use the chemical flea control. Nothing happened, luckily, or at least I don't think that anything happened, uh, even though Sky did have vestibular syndrome when he was 13. And uh, then he started getting these um, strange warts uh, when he was older and had a lot of them. So one never knows, but one thing I know for sure that I would never ever in my life put any of these products on my dog, on packs, because I know better and I've seen more and I learned more and I understand it better. So what do I do with ticks? If I go for a walk, I spray in a, in a tick infested area and I'll be there in May again. And it's gonna be, I, I dread that moment when I see the first tick. But every time I go for a walk in a grassy area or in a park, I basically spray packs with tick X. So the spray in the heavy infested areas can be done or must be done daily. And in the light, light infested areas, it may need to be done only once every week or so. You will have to basically figure out what the right number of sprays per month or per week is. I would always use it prior to walks in the heavy infested areas. But even then, what's going to happen? You will see ticks attaching from time to time, or you will see them crawling. And what I noticed, if I saw an attached tick, it was usually dead if I used tick hex. So that was good news. But the bad news is that those ticks are really hard to remove when they bite and die. So I have always the little tick, uh, tick uh, remover handy. And um, I also got, um, and I actually forgot to include it in, in this lecture. I also got a spray that freezes the tick if it's still alive. And basically every time I come from the park, I spend 10, 15 minutes bonding time and basically combing and checking, combing and checking packs for ticks. There is no real 100% reliable way of controlling ticks, but I know that with tick hex, I've been able to reduce. And if I'm diligent, I'm able to reduce the attachment by, I'm just gonna say maybe 90%, but there will be the odd one that will get attached. I must say that I am a little concerned about Lyme disease in uh, Europe because it's, uh, it's definitely there. So what I do as an addition to um, tick control, I also check packs for Lyme disease once a month. And I just check his, I uh, just do a fast test, rapid test, um, ELISA test. You can buy a kit on eBay, not eBay, uh, Amazon. 
and um, you would have to you would have to have someone collecting a blood sample, right? So, unfortunately, well, you could do it that you could uh, you could prick your dog in a certain let's say in a certain area, let's say on the ear, and get a drop of blood and do the test, but it still has to be treated with anticoagulant, so it's not that easy. Um, I would say if you have a really heavy tick infested or uh, if you live in an area that is really heavy with ticks or infested with ticks, you may want to do a test, rapid test in your veterinarian's clinic once every two to three months, just to kind of have the peace of mind that your dog does not have an acute lung disease. If that was the case, I would treat with antibiotics. This would be one of the situations where I would use antibiotics. Uh, in the acute stages, Lyme disease is quite treatable. In the chronic stages, it is much more difficult. Some of you may be asking about Lyme disease vaccine. It's one of the vaccines that I really hate with passion because I've seen young dogs that have gotten this vaccine ending up with very severe arthritis at the age of one or two years. And I believe that it is due to the side effect of the vaccines. I've seen that repeatedly. And this vaccine is also not approved in use of for humans. At least it wasn't. Uh, I think that it still is not approved for use in humans. Meaning that it is obviously unsafe for people and it should be deemed unsafe for dogs, but this vaccine is still used. Uh, so I would caution you, um, you don't want to basically cause symptoms that are pretty much similar to Lyme disease uh, by the vaccine itself. Vaccines have their place, but I think that we have overused them in generally in veterinary medicine. And um, I also do have a protocol for safer, gentler, less invasive vaccination and immunity of dogs. So if you have any uh, interest, uh, I'm sure that my team will post it, post the information. I have so, a question, if you don't mind. Yes, we can um, go, yeah, we can go with, with the next question. Oh, oh do you have a question? About I do have this, a question. Said, yeah, or? it was sure. kind of specifically. So um, one of the community members posted a question. So I first wanted to say congratulations to Melita, um, who won Flea Hex Wash. Our team has posted it and we will contact you. Um, and then the other question that was posted was in, related, um, in relation to limes and wondering if a dog has asymptomatic Lyme, do you have any information to share on that? Um, would you still be treating with antibiotics or anything like that if they tested positive and they're asymptomatic? That is a really hard question to answer. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Maybe, no, 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 that's okay. Um, positive titer may also mean just positive titer. You would have to actually check for the presence of the pathogen and, uh, and uh, run a test that is specific for that. So you would have to run an antigen test as opposed to antibody tests. If you see that the antibodies are high, that may be actually good news that your dog has developed antibodies. And I do suspect that most dogs or many dogs out there who have been exposed to ticks and Lyme disease actually will never have Lyme disease itself and will just develop antibodies. And that's what I am actually hoping for with Pax. I will be actually checking his uh, blood antibody level um, soon in the next couple of months, just to kind of get a sense of whether he has any antibodies against Lyme's or not, Lyme disease or not. Uh, because that would make it all much easier, right? So if there are no symptoms, um, it really depends. Um, I have seen some dogs getting this kind of typical lesion, the round donut lesion, where you have a red circle around a pale kind of circle center. Um, I would say if that happens, I would be more prone to actually treat with antibiotics. If you see that, um, that there's the typical Borrelia a reaction. Um, in dogs, it doesn't always happen. So you can't be 100% sure that every, every area where tick was attached will kind of, and, and was infected with Lyme disease would actually do that. It doesn't. But if you see it, I'd say go and consult your veterinarian. We also have, a, we also have an article on Lyme disease on our website. 
Awesome. Thank you. That's really good info. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, can we do a giveaway for Tic Hex while we were on? Yeah, the topic? why not? Why not? Perfect. Um, so for a prize of Tic Hex, I would like to know what essential oil is in Tic Hex that is not in Flea Hex household spray? Um, and the first person to give us that answer <laughs> will win a bottle of Tic Hex. Go. You are <laughs> tough. I think that you're tougher than Alicia with your questions. <laughs> <laughs> But I like it. I like it. We got to make people work a little bit. It? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, the only other thing that um, I'd like to suggest uh, when it comes to flea and tick control is to control these insects in your backyard by spreading diatomaceous earth in the garden and on the lawn where your dogs play. And um, Remember that, that none of this is 100% effective. Even the conventional toxic flea control is not 100% effective. But I think that what we have done so far is to be able to control fleas pretty much 99% if you are diligent and um, reduce the uh, infestation, the infestation by about 9%. So um, I hope that with this knowledge, you'll be able to, you'll be able to say goodbye to Flea and Fleo. I'm going to show you one more slide actually before we start taking questions. Um, this slide has been um, put together by my dear friend Jafia, who is an illustrator, and we've had it around for a long time. But I, you know, I. I sometimes ask, what are fleas and ticks good for? And I never kind of, I thought they were just a nuisance, the same mosquitoes are. But they are actually, they do play a role in nature and that is to feed birds because they are the food for these lovely, lovely winged creatures. And they are part of the environment. They have evolved for a reason. Um, they also allow some diseases to survive or parasite to survive like tapeworm and, and so on. So they're part of the natural environment. Um, in the past, they served as a, as a natural selection factor. If there's a weaker animal, obviously they may succumb to a tapeworm or they may succumb to Lyme disease and so on. We definitely do not want this to happen to our dogs. So, it's super important to address them and super important to control fleas and ticks. But even more so, it is important to protect your dog from the toxicity of flea and tick products. Because in my mind, they're actually more dangerous than the fleas and ticks themselves. Because they're very, I, I don't know do a dog that would die of fleas. Like it would be, it would have to be a very extreme situation. We do know that Lyme disease is real, so that's slightly different. But when it comes to the chemicals, I hope that you will take this to heart. I hope that you will remember that using something that can kill a dog is not a good idea. Using something that affects our nervous system is not a good idea using a product that actually harms the life-giving insects like bees and butterflies and food-giving insects uh, is not a good idea. And when you look at it, um, you know, it all comes down to money, right? Uh, it's the same thing like with processed food. There are some people who do not really have the know-how or the awareness of how harmful these products are, and they're willing to make them just because they make money. And the flea and tick industry is a huge industry. I do not know the numbers exactly, but I dare to say that it's a multi-million and maybe billion dollar industry. And um, we just have to protect ourselves. We can expect that uh, every veterinarian will be on board with what I'm saying here. Uh, flea and tick products and other medicines have been made part of the veterinary practice model. Some people believe that that's the only thing that we have and we can do. And some people just wanna make money. And it's hard to know who is who, 
I do not want to, to see veterinarians as people who are greedy. Most people are not. And uh, I believe that most veterinarians really do care. But we have been brainwashed by the marketing practices and the marketing techniques and tactics, ta tactics, tactics, my accent, <laughs> marketing tactics of, uh, of big pharma. And, um, you know, when people get used to something, they don't even think about it and they just give it and use it, right? So just be careful, check safety, medical safety data sheets and, and give your dog a hug for me. And I wish you happy and flea free and take free summer. And if you live in a warm climate um, all year round, and if you have any questions, I will be answering them right now. Awesome. Um, my question was hard, I'm sorry, but we do have a winner. Um, and our winner is doo -doo -doo, Lynn Bailey. And the answer is rose geranium. It is the one essential oil that is different in Tic Hacks. Um, in terms of community questions, uh, we obviously have some questions about Canada, which you did address. So thank you for that. Um, one question that has come up is what about a multi-dog, multi-cat household? Um, cats can be really sensitive mm. to essential oils, and I know that yes. our products can't be used on them. Um, do you have any, I know we don't really specialize in cats or anything like that, but do you have any comments on how to manage multi-cat and dog households? Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. It probably is you, Anna, who knows whether there are some people who use uh, flea hex for cats. Uh, I probably- We would... don't advise it um, yeah, because yeah. cats are just so sensitive to it. Um, I can say that in my experience in customer care, we do have a lot of community members that use flea hex in a cat and dog household. Um, and the cats seem fine with the household spray. Um, and there have been no issues or reports there, but we don't recommend it using it directly on cats. Uh, what are the most common, uh, I'm going to ask a question, what are the most <laughs> common um, uh, challenges that people face with, uh, with uh, flea hex and tick hex? Are there any? Uh, mm. And if so, uh, what have you seen? What, what, what have you seen? That's a good question. Uh, so flipping the script and a asking the community a question instead of them asking us, I like it. <laughs> No, asking, actually asking you as well. Asking you, me the question. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, the most, I mean, I would say that certain people initially um, are worried because there is some information out there that essential oils are not safe for dogs. Um, and that's a question that we can receive quite a bit of. Um, and basically explaining that, you know, we have, you have, you and Gabriella have picked these essential oils, knowing that they're absolutely safe. The quantity needed as well, because they're so powerful is really low and it's safe quantities. Um, so that's something that we get, um, outside of that people that have really fluffy dogs, like dogs with like a really, really, really thick coat. Um, I know that, um, our sort of old protocol that we were using could be quite a lot for them to just wash their dogs so much. So I think mm -hmm. the, um, mm -hmm. the new protocol that you explained that we're implementing will be really helpful for those folks. Yeah, when it comes to the essential oil and sensitivity of dogs, um, you guys, um, number one, we haven't really seen any adverse side effects. Like, you know, you can see that even Anna is actually thinking like, oh, what do people complain about? Like, that's pretty good news. And I kind of, I know that, that we have minimal concerns and complaints, maybe some skin irritation or people complain that their thick coated dog actually needs to be bathed more often. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in, in seven years of using these products, um, I think that seven years is a long time enough for something to show up. And we've sold thousands and thousands of, uh, of these bottles. And, uh, and um, I think that it's a good, it's a good product. Um, I'm really, I, I use it. You know, the, 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 <laughs> you know how picky I am and how, how, um, how obsessive I am about creating the best possible product or the safest product for 
our dogs, your dogs and my dogs, I would not be using these products if they're not safe. And we who would have been actually, we would have seen uh, some challenges and some reports. So that's, I think that this is the best I can do. I am being very honest that uh, when it comes to ticks, there is no 100% tick control that I have seen, uh, but I'm very confident that it'll decrease the tick attachment. I'm also confident that you'll be able to prevent fleas completely if you use it correctly. The other thing is that I am always happy to send you your money back if it doesn't work for you. But beside that, it's, um, you know, the world is not a Disneyland, as I said, and um, parasites are tricky and they're hard to, hard to, hard to uh, get rid of sometimes. So this is, um, I think that this is the solution that I would like to suggest in light of the fact that the toxicity is real and uh, the issues that we are seeing with conventional products are real. And the fact that I wouldn't use them. So I can't really recommend them to you, that's all. Thank you. Um, I'd like to do one last giveaway because we said we were gonna do three. This one will be easy mm -hmm. and it'll be for Flea Hex household uh, because that's the last one. Uh, what is the name of the dog that is on the Flea Hex label? easy question. Um, so it'll be the first winner for that one. And one last question for you, Peter, from the community mm -hmm. is wondering if you have any thoughts or experience on products like um, they have like t-shirts that are flea repellent now or like collars that are amber or ceramic beads or anything like that. Um, are those some of the products that you mentioned earlier that you haven't really seen great success with or do you have any other comments? I know you don't you know, I don't, I don't usually comment on specific products. Yeah. Um, I have used some of the ceramic color um, attachments mm -hmm. and uh, I have not seen them work. Mm -hmm. uh, if any of you have any products that actually work, I would like to know about, about that. And uh, we would love to connect with uh, people who make them. Um, <laughs> the more the merrier, to be honest. I, I think that that's, that's uh, that, that when it comes to, especially when it comes to ticks, if there's something that will prevent ticks 100% or close to it, or will be even more effective than tick hex, I would love to hear about it. Um, and we'll be also very keen to help that company or the manufacturer, the product to be promoted. So uh, we are here to help you guys to solve problems. And sometimes we may not have all the solutions. So if you have any additional knowledge, please let me know. I think that there is enough space for every well-meaning, kind and caring inventor or company to um, make their living, especially when they're doing something that is useful for and helpful and, and protects your dog and the environment. That's a really lovely way to put it. I like that. Thank you. Um, we do have a winner for our last question for Flea Hex Household. It'll be Debbie Murda. Congratulations. Debbie, congratulations. Any other questions, Anna, or we're all good? That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, make sure that you're subscribed, especially when it comes to the Canadian, um, Canadian uh, part of our listeners, because we will be sending you an information, what you can do, how you can order the product in the United States for individual use. That is allowed. We just cannot sell the product in Canada as of now. Thank you so much and um, have a wonderful day or evening, whatever it is in your time zone. And we'll be back. Thank you.